I've spent years traveling the world and developing my photography, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I really felt like I got a command over my street and documentary work. And I started to wonder, why is that? Not that I have all the answers, but why is it that now I feel more confident in the work that I'm creating? At first, it was easy to assume that all the reps, all the trips, all the practice, that that was what's really causing this improvement, but that's not really how the world works. And especially if you subscribe to the law of diminishing returns, it doesn't really mean that the more you do something, you're always gonna get better at it. And if you happen to be a fan of Vince Lombardi, you also know that practice doesn't always make perfect. So I sat down and wrote out what were the lessons that I adopted knowingly or unknowingly that have contributed to me being a more intentional photographer. Well, it turned into a really long list, so let me just share with you a handful of lessons that made the biggest impact on my journey. One of the first things that you'd hear coming up in photography is the idea of bad light, that certain times of the day or season, well, it wouldn't make for compelling photography. More specifically, that if you're out during that midday sun, that that could be detrimental to your work. And this just never made sense to me. What if, what if, what if we believed that there was no such thing as bad light? What if we looked at light as an opportunity where different kinds of light would invite a different kind of story to be shared. This was the switch that just changed my entire approach because no longer was I looking for a specific time of day to be out there creating. I simply would just put myself out there more often and try to tell a different kind of story. What does the light just before dawn provide? What does the light in a different part of the world during sunset provide? And yes, what does the light at high noon, what does that provide? When I started putting myself in these positions, I started to see how shadows and colors, they would morph to tell a different kind of story. By accepting that there was no bad light, I suddenly had much more time to create and I found myself in positions that were well outside of my comfort zone. The result of this is that I had more challenges to navigate. This led to inflection points in my learning and strengthening my ability to interpret light. So what I'll wholeheartedly share with you is that you just have to believe there's no such thing as bad light. If there's light out there, there's an opportunity to tell a story. Let's face it, sometimes you might not have the motivation to go out and start capturing your images. Maybe you feel like there's not much happening in your hometown, or maybe you feel like there's so much happening, it sort of paralyzes you into inaction, or you see something else that's being created by someone else, and that sort of creates an intimidation because suddenly you find yourself comparing your work to theirs. How do you get excited or excited again to go out with your camera and start capturing images? I think one of the best things you can do is to make it an assignment. Start with something so small, so minuscule that you can't help but rise to the challenge. Maybe it's to go out and capture something blue. Maybe it's to go out and take a picture of the shadow of garbage. Or maybe it's just to go out and capture a portrait of your best friend. Whatever it may be, create these super small, approachable assignments that make it easy for you to pick up your camera and get excited. What's interesting about this little trick here is that it has this compounding effect where all of a sudden I start capturing more than the assignment. And in some instances, this led to actual bigger assignments and projects. This practice of creating super small, approachable assignments for yourself it starts to take the what out of the equation and focuses on the how, because now you have a job to do, you have something to deliver on, and because it's so small and simple, the challenge of execution, it doesn't feel as intimidating, so you start to focus on how you're actually going to go about achieving this assignment. So something I would tell anyone that's doing street or documentary work is to give yourself an assignment. Start small, start simple, and build upon it from there. Now the last thing I'll share with you, and this might rub some photographers the wrong way, and it's to not overthink composition. 
Yeah, look, I will be out in different regions of the world and I used to think about, you know, what sort of composition do I want to land in this image? Am I going for the rule of thirds? Am I looking for leading lines? Am I following the golden ratio? And this would create missed opportunities, but also might impede other kinds of stories I can tell with a photograph. After sifting through tons of photo books and looking up interviews, I started to realize that composition shouldn't come first. What I should look for in my photography is great form, and great form will often lead to interesting compositions. I had to retrain myself to prioritize form, how objects and subjects come together to create depth. I had to retrain myself to make this the priority over composition. And look, I'm not saying you throw everything you know about composition out the window. I'm just saying that we might over prioritize this one aspect in an image. There's hundreds of articles that show you all different kinds of composition and what is perfect, but this often can stifle creativity. Instead, I think you find the form of an image. You point your camera at things and see how they come together to create depth, to create a story even, and let that dictate your photography and the story that you're going to tell. By doing this over and over again, I really believe that this will lead to interesting and meaningful compositions. Look, this list could have been much, much longer, but I wanted to boil it down to the three things that really stood out in my journey. Street photography, it's a process. It's constantly changing and evolving. And more than anything, I think having a creative process that's fun, that's probably the most important thing that you can do for your work. Anyway, that's enough for this video. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.